what is going on guys welcome back to another brand new video today we're gonna talk about a very sensitive topic a very complicated topic or at least that's what i thought it was um but before we do that there will be a link in the description below which will take you to binance.com binance.com if you're not familiar with it is one of the world's biggest crypto exchange you can buy you can sell you can transfer you can swap you can hold you can do whatever you want crypto of course and if you use my link to sign up on binance.com you will get a 20 percent discount every time you have to pay a transaction fee also there will be a link to my other youtube channel where i sometimes upload gaming videos and also a link to my twitch channel where almost every single night i stream video games so if you're interested in that you have a couple of extra seconds a day you're more than welcome to join us without further ado let's jump into the video so the thing i want to talk about today is that if forex online forex trading is halal slash permissible in islam or not long answer short it is halal it is permissible there is a way to do it in a halal manner there is a way to do it in a haram manner and so today i'm going to talk about both of them but first of all before before talking about the halal and the haram ways of trading online forex i feel like i owe you guys an apology those of you who stopped trading forex because of me because not only did i waste my own time i dragged you guys as well into this with me along with me so the problem is the biggest misconception about online forex trading and i'm talking about the biggest okay this is the biggest issue in today's time when it comes to the ulama the scholars the the ones who give the rulings okay the the ones who give the fatawa the problem is they think exactly the way how i thought okay about online forex trading and so i thought that forex trading where you know for an exchange you go to a shop or you go to a bank you give them one currency and then you receive another currency whatever currency you desire and so i thought the foreign exchange okay where you give currency and you receive currency hand-to-hand -hand exchange is what online forex exchange or online forex trading is as well that is the biggest misconception in today's time online forex trading is cfds contracts for differences or contracts for difference okay cfd contracts for difference is literally what the word says it is it is a contract for the difference for the difference in price so whatever you let's say you buy at a certain price and the price goes higher from your point of purchase the difference between your entering price and where the current market price is, is the difference, right? So the contract is for the this difference. And that's how you get paid. It's a contract between you and the broker. So you're the client and the broker is the website that allows you to trade on their platform. It's a contract between you guys. So whatever you settle on, let's say you sell and the market crashes, whatever the difference is going to be, the broker has to pay you that money. Okay? Because that is the contract between you and the broker. So online forex trading falls under the category of CFDs, contracts for differences. And so the biggest misconception or misunderstanding about online forex trading is that there has to be a possession, a true possession, a real possession of currency. So whatever you are buying or selling, you must own the currency physically. It must be under your possession, under your possession. Okay. And there must be a hand to hand exchange this is where the problem is this is where i thought it is haram and that is why one of the biggest reasons why i quit forex however online forex trading is not forex trading it is not it has the only thing it has to do with currencies is the pair is are the pairs that you trade on or the price of the pairs and that's it nothing else it has nothing to do with the original currency you cannot own it Okay, so it's a contract. So the first argument of the shayukh is that, of the scholars, is that you don't own the currency. You don't own the actual currency. You don't actually own the currency you're trading. How can you when it has nothing to do with owning the currency? It is a contract. You own the contract digitally, of course. You own the contract. And so the counter argument for this is that whenever you buy shares, for example, buying shares is permissible in Islam. There is so many fatawa on this. There are so many rulings on this as long as the company you're buying shares in has nothing to do with illegal or haram products. For example, you cannot buy shares in a company that sells or deals in pork, okay, or alcohol or gambling, okay. So, but when you buy shares, those shares are not given to you physically, okay. It is given to you via a digital contract, 
which is stored on the website you buy the contracts uh you buy the shares from and so according to me and again guys everything that i say in this video is my own personal opinion and my understanding again okay that is the first argument the second argument is that it involves interest now problem here is that when you use leverage okay and leverage is basically a a loan that the broker is giving to you on your smaller money so you can trade uh on a bigger position you can invest more with small with a little amount of money so when you close the position whether loss or profit the loan the leverage goes back to the broker you never own it it's never in your possession however it is under your control you can choose whatever leverage you want to trade with now the problem here is that every time you close a trade in profit or loss you pay a commission and this commission the broker charge charges you for offering for offering you their services for offering you their platforms for offering you their spreads let's say okay or the broker will say that this is administration fee and this is how we make money we have to charge you fees otherwise if you keep winning we don't make money right from what i understood was if you're using leverage okay and you trade and when you close it to trade the leverage the the loan goes back to the broker and the commission on top of that which you have to pay becomes interest now i'm somewhat 50 50 on this because whether you use leverage or not you have to pay the commission fee okay so it cannot be labeled as interest it is entirely up to you however you want to understand it the second thing about leverage is you can choose one to one ratio to one leverage you do not have to choose one to one one to 50 one to 10 one to 30 one to 100 one to 50 one to 500 you don't have to but then you have to start trading with a large capital. For example, let's say a thousand dollars at least, or two thousand, or five thousand, or ten thousand. You get the point. So if you don't have that amount of money, you cannot start trading with a little amount of money and use no leverage. So in my understanding, you are paying the commission fee whether you use leverage or not. So it doesn't become interest, in my opinion, now that I understand it better. It does not become interest because you have to pay it anyways. Interest would be if you use the leverage and the commission fee is and the commission fee increases. OK, but the commission fee is according to your lot size, not according to your not according to your leverage. Now, one might argue that you can. Oh, OK, so if the lot if the commission is tied to your lot size and so you can use a bigger lot size if you use a bigger leverage. So indirectly, it goes back to it goes back to leverage so what if i'm using my own capital okay and i'm using a bigger lot size and i still have to pay more commission so that way it's not tied it does not in indirectly go back to my leverage so like i said it is up to you however you understand it the understanding i have is that you pay your your amount of commission is fixed and it increases or decreases according to your lots it has nothing to do with the leverage now there's also another argument these scholars present and that is the margin the issue these scholars have with margin is that if you buy something which is in this case a contract you have to be a hundred percent in control of whatever it is that you are buying of whatever it is that is in your possession so the shayukh they say that if you use leverage okay and the uh, the broker puts a margin on your trading available trading balance you are not 100 percent in control you are not 100 percent in possession of what you think you are 100 percent of uh in control of but it is not 100 percent under your possession and so the counter argument for this would be that i am 100 percent in still in control and in possession of my contract i can close it I can take partials, I can close half my position and let half run. I can manage my stop loss, I can manage my take profit, I can close the position entirely even if I'm in loss. And so I am free to do whatever I want with the contract. Their argument is that sure, you are free to do whatever you want with the contract, with the trade that is open, but with a little amount of money. A some amount of money is reserved for your open trade. And so if you think about it, this is nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. If anything, the broker puts a margin on your available trading balance because they reserve some amount of your money because they don't want you to lose all of your money in case you don't know what you're doing and you are going in a loss and you keep your trade open in hopes that one that, that there will come a time when you go when you will break even or you will go in profit and you will clo close the trade and so that never happens and you end up losing all of your money so the margin what it will do is if you don't manage your trade it will manage your trade on your behalf technically so that's nothing wrong with the margin it is for your own protection it is for your own good the next argument that the shayukh or the scholars they present is 
that it is it falls trading falls under the category of gambling this is some sort of gamble the counter argument for that is it is gambling for somebody who has no idea what they're doing for example a person is completely unfamiliar with forex the only knowledge they have is that you make money if you buy and the market goes up and you make money if you sell and the market goes down if the person has only this sort of knowledge and they trade based based on this knowledge then yes it is gambling because then you're just saying the market is going to go up from here and i'm going to make money and then you're betting on the market going down if it does you are making money off of it. but you have no idea what technical analysis is you have no idea what the candle what the price action is what market structure is you have no idea what liquidity is you have no no idea what the 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 sessions are the uh the forex trading sessions major sessions you have no idea what the currencies are you have no idea what the time frame is you have no idea what technical analysis what fundamental analysis is and so you are just betting on the market going higher and lower then yes it is a form of gambling but you, if you use a strategy and if you use technical analysis if you use fundamental analysis you know what you're doing for example if a sheikh sits down with you and they say go ahead son or go ahead brother explain this to me why is the market behaving like this at this time of the day why is the market behaving like this and like this me i can sit down with anybody i can explain me i can sit down i can predict future trade setups because i know what i'm doing i know what this is i'm familiar with it i've studied i've spent time and so no it is not just a form of gambling for me if you if you have a strategy you you sit down in the front of the computer whether it is support and resistance whether it is smart uh, smart money concepts whatever it, whatever it is whatever it is you use whatever it is the method you have for trading for making money consistently then it exempts you from uh falling under the category of gambling that is the counter argument for the gambling part now there is also a an argument for the risk the risk that forex only forex trading carries along with it and so to eliminate the risk factor we use smart money concepts because it is the one strategy the one method that uh, that allows you to trade with the smallest stop loss possible so you are reducing the risk as much as technically possible or in some cases it is almost non-existent one pip two pip stop loss what is that tell me one business in the world that has that much risk factor only one percent or two percent and then you are risking that to gain almost 50 percent on top of that so eliminating risk factor is by using a proper risk management system whether it is a strategy whether it is controlling your stop losses whatever it is a proper risk management system eliminates the risk factor and the the, the argument there is also an argument where the shayuk they say that if you want to trade online you must do so you must sign up with a broker that is legal that has a trading license trader's license and which is also regulated by some sort of authority or a country and so that is very easy you can go ahead and you can search for the brokers that are available in the middle east which are regulated and also licensed and so it is completely fine they're not fraudulent they're not going to take your money and run away it is completely fine to sign up with them invest with them and trade with them one of the most important things i think right now is the swap topic part where you pay swap and it is actually very easy so i hope almost all of you know that there are islamic accounts where you sign up and you do not have to pay swap even if you keep your positions running more than 24 hours overnight you do not have to pay swap you have to pay a larger commission though not only a larger commission but you also have to deal with bigger spreads i don't know if you're familiar with that or not but that's how it is with islamic account or there's another way you can trade with a normal account with a regular account not an islamic account you can trade with a regular account all you have to do is intraday trading or scalping so whatever whenever you enter a trade you close it before the midnight because that's when they start charging you swap or interest and so and that way you also don't have to deal with swap you don't have to pay swap and you don't have to deal with bigger spreads the spreads are almost non-existent on regular account so for scalpers it is a paradise and so you guys can see how almost every single argument has a counter argument and it is very logical and so my brothers and sisters cfds are completely halal in my personal opinion may allah forgive me if i have again misunderstood it and may allah guide me to the straight path and towards halal rizq 
And so that is what CFDs are contracts for differences. And these contracts are available for almost all the instruments, shares, commodities, metals, indices, forex trading, even cryptocurrencies. And so inshallah, I hope this is my last video on this topic because, and also before I end the video, the brother who gave, who introduced Muhammad al Qari's book to us, to a lot of the brothers in my last halal or haram video in the comments. I could not translate the book because I don't have the time. I have to type the whole book in Arabic and 30 pages of it. I don't have the time. But I gave the book to a sheikh who happens to be from Yemen. He read the whole book and he said there is, again, he said the same thing. He said the, the author of the book presents the arguments from shuyukh who consider this as haram. And from Shuyukh who consider this as halal. So there's both the sides presented in the book. Pros, cons. Halal, haram. And so he said there's ikhtilaf between the ulama, between the Shuyukh. And so the Shaykh asked me, he said, brother, whatever thing carries an ikhtilaf, you should stay away from it. And so I asked the Shaykh, I said, Shaykh, you tell me one thing which the scholars agree upon and I will do that thing. I will leave everything else because nowadays we, we're living in times where, where there is ikhtilaf in almost everything. Okay. The scholars, they never agree upon one thing. One group of scholars will agree. The other will disagree. Okay. So we have ikhtilaf in the, the prayer, the, the way we pray. Uh, we have ikhtilaf in spotting the, the moon for Eid. Okay. And so I don't want to get into that argument, but... It is not my field of expertise, so I don't, uh, all I can do is present my opinion about, but, and the sheikh, the, he laughed and he said, you are right. And so he, he, he suggested I perform istikhara. If you don't know what istikhara is, it is two, uh, rakaz of nafl, which you pray after, uh, Aisha, Salat al-Aisha, and then you ask Allah for, for, uh, for guidance. Salat al-Istikhara will in some way convey the message from Allah to you that whatever you are doing, is it good for you or not? Is it beneficial for you or not? So if you, I would suggest the same to you guys, perform Salat al-Istikhara because where Forex may be halal, online Forex trading may be halal, it may not be beneficial for you. There is a difference between halal and haram and being beneficial or non-beneficial. So that is what Salat al-Istikhara is. It is asking Allah for guidance in the matter where you are partaking yourself in. And so you will get a sign if it is beneficial for you, you will get a sign if it's not beneficial for you. So my brothers and sisters, this is the end of the video. I hope, I hope this is the last time I have to sit and talk about this again whatever i said in this video is an opinion of mine is an understanding of mine completely every sheikh i went to every sheikh i discussed this with even a sheikh from an all uh, from a bank in pakistan he said to me that this is haram and it's because you don't have you don't actually own the currency that you're trading and again this is cfds it has nothing to do with currencies you can use cfds for indices or metals okay and you don't have to actually own the metal you can use it for commodities for oil for natural gas etc etc and so the argument becomes invalid okay this is how misunderstood online forex trading is in today's world and so according to me again this is completely halal this is fine as long as you are not doing the haram way okay as as long as you are not doing it the haram way you're not gambling, you're not paying swap, you're not signed up with some fraudulent website who is registered or, or regulated in some Caribbean island or some country like Cyprus that has almost non-existent laws for these type of uh, websites. So that is it. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Please, if you still have any confusions, misunderstandings, leave them in the comments below. I will be more than happy to answer them. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.